Robin Wade, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, I dropped this on Adam about 20 seconds, well, two minutes ago and said, Adam, you, you, I probably can't introduce myself, so you should do it. And you did a good job. I should hire that guy. <laughs> so, so I'm going to talk to you today about something called the Magical Marketing Mystery Machine. Who wants to know about the Magical Marketing Mystery Machine? Who would struggle to say the Magical Marketing yeah, Mystery yeah. Machine? Yeah, a few people. So basically, what I'm going to be covering is um, uh, most people who know me, so I'm a business coach in a local area, um, I have a slightly disruptive way about how I go about coaching my clients. Um, as you may have noticed, and no offense to anybody who is uh, in a suit and has gray hair, but I'm a business coach in a t-shirt. And I believe that um, coaching is all about having fun, basically. How, creating success and building businesses whilst also having fun. So what I'm going to be talking to you about today is my take on marketing, which is going to be slightly disruptive. I'm going to be throwing an awful lot of different ideas at you. Um, and I'm hopefully going to change not just one or two of your perceptions around marketing, but all of your perceptions around marketing and your approach to marketing. Does that sound pretty cool? But first, I want you to do something for me. If you don't do this for me, I'm not going to give you my talk. Okay? So stand up, all of you. Now, if, if, if you have got my book, take your shot, and left a review, you have my permission to sit down. <laughs> Online. Okay. So, if you, if you have got my book and not yet left a review, please put your hand up. Oh! 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 That hurts. You guys can sit down too. So this is why I don't really need to give myself much of an introduction. So there's a few <laughs> fantastic people here who um, don't have my book yet. But what I want you to do, if you want a copy of my book, just go to that address. Right, you can sit down now. Write this address down, bit.ly, TYS promo. And once you've filled in that little form, just come and show me before the end of the day, and I'll give you a copy of my book. OK? And those of you who didn't leave a review, oh, oh. OK, so that's it. So. What is marketing? So everybody's um, perceptions of marketing. Marketing is about Facebook groups. It's about Twitter. It's about your website. It's about YouTube. It's about flyer drops. It's about email newsletters. It's about Facebook ads. It's about networking events. It's about Instagram. Who's going to? Who agrees with me? That's what marketing is all about. Yeah? There's a few people nodding, going, yeah. Now, you all know where this is going, most of you who know me. It's all bullshit. It's not true at all. So this is where the magical marketing mystery machine comes in. Magical marketing mystery machine looks a little bit like that. We don't really know what it spits out, but it's got a funnel, and we put stuff into it. So we chuck in MailChimp and YouTube and LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, blogging, uh, Twitter, and our website, and Facebook ads. We shove all of those into our magical marketing mystery machine, basically, into our funnel. And that creates customers, right? Yeah, creates clients. Every time. Every time, all the time, doesn't it? So we put all this content out there and we get clients. That's marketing, right? No. Nope. Marketing is not any of those things. Those are just tools that we use in marketing. Okay? This is the first thing I want you to get your heads around. Those are just tools that we use in marketing. The process of marketing is actually very different. If you remember the hopper, there, that nice shiny silver hopper there. Actually, the hopper for most businesses looks like that. Anybody know what that is? It's a muck spreader. And it sprays marketing shit all over <laughs> potential prospects. Okay? So just a very quick marketing 101 for you. By the way, I'm going to make all of these slides. Thank you. That's really kind. I'm going to make all of these slides available for you just for the people in the room today. So not in the Facebook group. I'm going to send a, list, list, um, uh, a PDF out via the Eventbrite listings, okay, so that you will get a copy of this. Um, basically, Marketing 101, identify your target market. Makes sense. We all know that. Where do they hang out? So very simply, we've got to actually get a bit stalky and start to understand our clients really, really well. Most people don't take the time to go through these basic steps in their businesses. So we just start producing content. 
And that's it. We just They told us to do Facebook ads. We just start doing Facebook ads. We haven't actually taken the time to work out who we're targeting those Facebook ads at. We just chuck out a blog article. We haven't taken the time to do some research to work out who that blog article is actually aimed at. So we're going to slow the process down and start to get to know our clients a little bit better. We're going to go to them and we're going to make it easy. So we do need to know exactly where they hang out because we need to be in front of them and not just once or twice. Who's tried Facebook ads and it didn't work? Yeah, who's tried email marketing? It didn't work. Yeah, who's tried blogging? Doesn't work. Okay, the reason why it doesn't work is because most of us try it once, and we're actually we're not experts in Facebook advertising. We're not experts in email marketing using Mailchimp. We're not expert copywriters and bloggers. We've got a couple in the room today, thankfully. Um, so what we've got to do, as you know, business owners, is show up regularly and often with the same consistent message, and make sure that when our clients, our prospects, are in the, the right mindset to buy our products that we are the one who appears front and center, the foremost um, point in their minds. And we have to do that by not just doing the odd Facebook ad, but learn how to do it well and do it consistently. Not just do one email marketing campaign and go, oh, it didn't work for me. Because the likelihood is if you, I don't know, maybe you work with um, parents of uh, school-aged children, and, or work for parents of school-aged children, and you sent your email out at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday morning during half term. Yeah? Had you sent it at the same time next week, they wouldn't be on half term. They probably might be sat at their desk doing a bit of work. Okay? That's how email marketing works. We're consistent with it. Okay? So it's really, really important. Consistency is the key. These three numbers, I want you all to write them down. Right now. Everybody. 7114. Stands for seven hours of engagement across 11 touch points and four locations. So most of us, do our marketing based around these touch points. We'll get a brochure and a website, social media platforms, YouTube channel, and various other um, different marketing channels set up. But the reality is nobody is going to buy your products or services unless they've had seven hours worth of engagement with you. Now, that's not me making these numbers up. Google did a study with all like gazillion bits of data. It's now in a book called Zero Moments of Truth. Okay? They said that if we don't engage prospects for seven hours, it's unlikely we're going to get them as clients. Okay? So imagine you come to a networking event, a bit like StroudNet, and you've got a business card. And you chatted to somebody for five or ten minutes this morning and you exchanged business cards. Maybe you go and have a look at their website if you can find it, and maybe browse their LinkedIn. Well, we've got four touch points there, but each one of those steps, like you're talking like business card, like 15 seconds if they're a bit anal and they're just staring at it. You know, you've got the, net, the five or ten minute conversation, maybe two and a half minutes is the average time of engagement that people spend on websites these days. Um, and then maybe if they scroll down your LinkedIn profile, probably may not see anything of interest in there, and I'll explain to you why later on. But we've got nowhere near that seven hours worth of engagement. So this is why I focus my marketing around things like speaking engagements, because I'm up here now, and I've got captured your attention. You can't, well, you could walk away if you wanted to, I suppose. <laughs> but I've got you for the next half an hour, okay? If you take my book away and read it, as most of you did, some of you didn't leave reviews, not, not holding on to that. Um, <laughs> much. I do remember all of you though. <laughs> um, so, but you read the book, it's about an hour, hour and a half to read, two hours maybe if you're a bit slow. Um, and then you start to go into my YouTube channel, um, maybe you'll sit down and do a consultation with me and I'm starting to check off. By the way, no money's exchanged hands by this point, okay, except for the £25 you pay or £20 you paid for the, the ticket to Stroudnet, but that's for the networking side of it and the speakers and for lunch and things like that. But we have to all be looking at how much engagement we're building up with our prospects. And that will start to, if you start to introduce free gifts and things that, you know, there's, there's another one in the goodie bags, a couple in the goodie bags, actually, from um, one Sarah Townsend, um, who's um, produced a fantastic brochure. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. And also the book which you see in there about lean content. And I suggest all of you sit down after today and read both of those, because they are written, two guides written by expert copywriters. Um, a fantastic, fantastic gifts that we've been able to arrange for you today. Um, but those are really great examples of a gift to all of you, and you'll now sit down and read them half an hour, an hour, or something like that. You'll have a bit more trust and engagement. Now, if you're looking for a copywriter, who are you going to turn to? Probably one of those two people, I should think. And we're going to get one for Deborah as well soon for the next Stroudnet. Um, so how do we go about going about the engagement process? And, and this is actually what 
marketing really is okay it's not about the content and the tools we use and things like that but it's actually about the process of nurturing our prospects and the journey we take them through there's one thing is standing out online but the second thing is like where you, where where we drop the ball as as human beings and business owners so we've got the content to start off with um, but then what we've got to do is transfer those that that the content that we're putting out there into conversations first mistake people make is when a client or prospect puts a hand up and they say, I'm interested, we ignore it. And we do nothing with it. We go, well, I don't know what to do next, because we don't have the marketing asset. We don't have the brochure, or the lean content book, or take your shot or something to give to our clients, our prospects, okay? So what we've got to do when somebody says, oh, I really like that post you wrote about whatever it might have been, um, we say, well, that's cool. If you want to know more about that, I've got this free 42 page PDF guide. Why don't you go and read that? Or I've got this 10-minute video which will really help you through that challenge which you've got in your business or whatever it is. So basically, um, what it comes down to is like most people have some form of intelligence, right? We hope. When it comes to your products and service, they literally have none. So you have to literally take them by the hand and lead them on this journey through your products, your service, and your, your, your customer journey. Next thing, we actually want to get the human element into it. So we take it offline, okay? If any of you think that you can just do business online, online these days because the internet has made it easy, it's all bullshit. People buy from people and it's turning around full circle and it's coming back to people want to sit down with other people and have face-to-face -face human contact. We are pack animals at the end of the day. And then finally, finally, after the end of that seven hours worth of engagement across those 11 touch points and across multiple different locations, we've earned the right to be able to ask for some money in exchange for a product or service, okay? That happens at the end. And what that does is it builds loyal customers. Second set of numbers, which, and I want you to write these three numbers down, please. 70, 10, 2. This is the second set of numbers that came out of Zero Moments of Truth. Most, most business owners focus on this number down at the bottom. Our KPIs, key performance indicators in our business, are based on turnover and sales and profit. Who agrees that those are the right KPIs? A few of you are a bit, mm, okay. The reason why they're the wrong KPIs is because by the time most people get to review those KPIs, the horse has bolted. We're doing an annual review and we have no way of influencing that number up or down, okay. Whereas actually on a monthly basis, if we look at the number of leads that we're pulling in, so these are, these are lead indicators, that's a lag indicator. If we're measuring the leads and we get, I don't know, six months through the year and that number is only 10, it's unlikely we're going to hit our KPI. Okay? So we need to start measuring our leads. Has that changed anybody's perceptions about the volume of activity which they're doing in their business right now from a marketing perspective? Yeah, there's a couple, a few people, yeah, there's a few people starting to nod. Okay, so it's really important that we measure these numbers. Now, I don't want any excuses. I don't want people to turn and say, I'm not a numbers person. Again, it's bullshit. You cannot own a small business these days and not know at least enough about the numbers in your business, marketing, sales activities, the things that work for your business, um, how the accounts and the bookkeeping work, to at least be able to tell somebody else how to do it. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't understand even a little bit about these things. You cannot use excuses like, I'm not into numbers. It doesn't fly with me. That's not a business owner. I know my numbers. So in 2017, um, I collected 815 um, business cards from various speaking gigs I went to. I booked 125 consultations. I got 40 clients. 15 of those were in my group coaching program. I had five ad hoc clients, eight breakthrough clients, and six clients came in and left my program, which means I have an attrition rate of 12%. So I know that on a weekly basis, if I sit one co um, consultation a week, my business just stays where it is. If I sit two a week, my business grows. Okay, very simple metric. All I've got to do is fill up those consultations. Okay, is this changing anybody's approach to how they might deal with marketing now? Yeah, and how we might measure it. Good. So this is where it's going to get really interesting. So what sort of things do we actually want to be writing about? Okay, because quite frankly, I know this is, um, this is my anti, like, um, uh, lifting everybody up speech, but quite frankly, most of the content I see on LinkedIn and blogs and things like that and YouTube is just dull. Yeah? How many of us read a headline and go, oh, yawn. Not another one of those, like, those, in fact, most, most of them don't even have a headline, 
quite, you know, and they expect you just to read this thing. And then you're kind of like, you're left leaning, le left, if, even if you do read it, because maybe it's one of your associates or contacts or something like that, you're just left feeling a little bit flat. And you're just like, oh. So we've got to find some really cool, interesting stuff to, to um, so I'm going to show you some tools now. I tend to steer away from tactical stuff, but I'm going to give you lots of tactical stuff today. Practical stuff you can do right now, starting from today, that's going to change the way you market to your prospects. Okay. So the first tool I want you to look at is um, one called Portent. So, sorry, uh, Answer the Public. So Answer the Public takes search terms. So there's a little search box just down at the bottom here. Takes search terms, like Business Coach. And then it starts to tell you about what your prospects are actually searching for on Google and Bing. Okay, so most of us think we know our clients. Again, we don't stop and do the research to work out exactly what it is that they're searching for. So people are searching for, well, this one's obvious, who is the best business coach in the world? Um, where to find a business coach? What can a business coach do for you? How much does a business coach cost? Why do you need a business coach? So this is what people are actually searching for. They want to know extra information about a business coach before they make their buying decision. Okay, so this is a great opportunity just to get to know your audience. Where it got really interesting for me for business coaches, who, who here struggles to niche? Does anybody struggle? Don't, they don't really know what their niche is? Well, this gave me about 20. So business coach for massage therapists, tradesmen, interior designers, accountants, online businesses, small businesses, creative entrepreneurs, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is in one, one simple search, took me about 20 seconds. I got a whole host of information about what people are searching for online. Okay, and all of you can get access, you know, this is a free tool at the moment. So use Answer the Public, write down Answer the Public. One of the other things about sort of what content you actually need to be putting out is um, who's familiar with the term sell them what they need, not what they want? Yeah, again, bullshit. Yeah, we market, basically, we, we, we tell people about the awesome outcome we're going to deliver right from the off. So mine is, if you work with me, my intensive coaching program, I'll double your turnover in six months. Now, some of you will be thinking, I'm eh, not sure about that, but you'll need, I've got things to back that up. I've got plenty of clients in the room, for example. Um, but most of us are afraid to really kind of big ourselves up and like shout about the really great stuff that we do. And like one of the key things that I try and get my clients to a place is that um, we have that much confidence in the product or service we sell that... Um, you can offer a 100% money back guarantee in it without worrying about it because you're that confident you can deliver that outcome. So we start to talk about it and we start to use that message in our marketing. Okay? We don't make false promises. We don't lie about stuff. We tell people what we can do. And you're all good business owners. You run great businesses. So tell people about it. So important. So we market to what people want. We sell them what they want. So we give them a bit more clarity and a bit more confidence that we can deliver that awesome outcome. It's simple, isn't it? Um, the mistake that most people make, and look at this, when you, when you look, into, look at LinkedIn next, and you're looking at people's posts and whatnot, you'll see that most people go straight into feature selling. Okay? Now, I could sit here and tell you that my coaching program requires you to meet me once a month for two hours, that there's a Facebook group accountability, and this, that, and the other. But the reality is, actually, none of you are interested in that, because you're all sat there thinking, well, what's in it for me? Yeah, all of your prospects are all sat there when you speak to them thinking, well, what's in it for me? And for most of them, their biggest problem is going to be time and money in some way, shape or form. Yeah, make their problem go away. Take their pain away. OK, so we need to be talking about that as an outcome. We need to sell them clarity and confidence around that. And then finally, finally, we deliver the features. We deliver what they actually need. OK, plus the awesome outcome. Basically, tell them what you're going to do. W turnover, do it, and then tell them what you did. And that should be obvious. In fact, you shouldn't even need to tell them what you did. Is this all making sense? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing is, like, how do you go about writing engaging content? So there's a very simple principle in copywriting, which I've, two or three copywriters in the room will know about, but ADA, the ADA principle. So make a note of this. The first one is to grab somebody's attention. Okay. When I talked about the magical marketing mystery machine, everybody's kind of interested in that. And you're like, all I've got to do is get you hooked in to, to listen to the next sentence that comes out of my mouth at that point. Okay, and as long as I'm relatively interesting, you'll stick with me. So first of all, you've got to grab their attention. And by think about, um, there's a picture of a drill up there. So this is very much like the typical, like why do people go into being to buy a drill? Yeah, it's not to drill a hole. 
it's not even to put a screw into the wall. It's probably to put a picture or something like that up there. And actually, it's not even about the picture. It's about the content in the picture and the emotion that picture draws out the person looking at it. Not about the drill. See how far I took that then? Most people in marketing don't even get that far. Okay? So we've got to think about the benefit behind the benefit in your business for your prospects. Not just the first thing, not just I'm going to save you, you time, I'm not just going to save you money, but what is that actually going to mean to you? You know, I've worked with a client who I took them from £1,000 a month to £4,000 a month in 12 months. Okay? It's not about the money. The simple fact is that what that meant with a, um, a boyfriend, girlfriend and their two children, um, that they could actually then rent accommodation, they could actually start to put aside a significant amount of money for a deposit on their house. So it's not about their business, it's not about the money, it's about the house. That's the benefit behind the benefit for them. So whenever you start to think about your prospects, go deep, keep on digging, okay? Um, another thing about writing kind of the headlines, the attention-grabbing piece as well, there's some fantastic tools which I found out there just to kind of help you along the way. Now, most people will say, you know, when you see posts which are like top 10 tips for email marketing, you probably will go, oh, not another one of those posts, or some of you will, okay? But the reality is that person has actually thought about who their target market is and the fact that if you don't read that, you probably haven't got a problem with email marketing. Okay, so if you sat there thinking, oh, not another one of those posts, it's because, not because of the headline, it's because you're not interested in email marketing. Okay, um, this is a great tool, portent idea generator, basically. Um, and what it does, it's made up typically with four parts. You can put a search term in there and you can heap, keep on hitting refresh and it'll come up with some really cool like articles for you. So my, this one came up, how to build an empire with a business coach. Uh, 17 BS facts about web designer everyone thinks are true. Now, who's going to read that article? Yeah? A few of you are going to read that. 16 secrets about pigeons the government is hiding. <laughs> who's going to read that, even if you're not interested in pigeons, yeah? Um, so this comes up with some really great stuff. And the, the idea is that it doesn't have to be the 16 secrets. The idea is you just get the structure of the headline right. Something that's catchy, um, amusing like that, I don't know. Probably I could put that at the start of a, a thing about you know, business coaching. But the problem is then it's not related to pigeons. Unless I'm coaching pigeons. Sounds weird. Uh, unbelievable shiatsu success stories. <laughs> Thinking of you when I wrote that one. So, um, you know, you can get some, like, it's just about having a few power words in there. Unbelievable. Like, it catches the imagination. You're like, oh, I've got an unbelievable, gosh. You know, what were the other ones? 16 secrets that the government is hiding. It's quite a powerful, bold statement. Um, 17 BS facts that everyone thinks are true. You can see the positivity, and uh, that's a bit negative, but see the positivity in the headlines here about grabbing people's attention. Another tool which I found, it's called title-generator.com. This one is brilliant. I kid you not, it gives you 700 headlines in one click. It's, it's obscene. And I put in get more leads. So get more lead strategies for beginners. Um, three mistakes in getting more leads that make you look dumb. Quickest and easiest ways to get more leads. At those three titles, how many of you would have read one of those if I'd written it? Yeah, a few of you. So, um, and there's 700 of those, so you can just knock yourself out. And that is blog content until you die. It's just brilliant. Also, how many people use stock photos? Come on, fess up. Right, no more of those bland like stock photos where people are like in suits and they're blue and they're shaking hands, right? Let's try and get a bit more creative about the imagery which we use. Because again, the image and the headline are what is going to pull people into that. So this, again, there's loads of like silly little tools like this. You know, break your own news. So you just punch in a headline and a ticker, and and you get end up with a fantastic graphic that you can use in your social media. Again, a lot of you probably are looking at this, going, "Well, would I be drawn in by that?" Well, yeah, probably if you know me, you'd be like, "Oh, what's he been up to now?" <laughs> so what website is that? Uh, that is, is break your own news. Yeah. Again, if you overuse it, now I can see there's going to be 50 posts this afternoon. We've all Stroud nets in the news. But, um, but again, if you overuse it, then people will start to get probably a bit bored with it. So you've got to mix it up a little bit. There's some cool stuff that you can do on Instagram as well now. Rather than just posting up single images, I've seen a lot of people chopping up images into four blocks. And then as the Instagram tiles get laid up, then you can make up a full picture with it. It's like, it's, it's crazy. And even little things like that, especially if you've got a, a brand which really kind of pops out. Um, 
um, can really make kind of your Instagram feed quite interesting. So the next stage is interest. Um, the headline's great, but if you can't write for toffee, somebody will read the first sentence or two and they're just going to get bored and disappear. So what we've got to do is we've got to get to a point whereby each sentence is leading the reader into the next sentence and the next sentence and the next sentence. The purpose of every sentence, get them to read the next one. So I did a, I had a challenge in my, um, in my group. It's called the Fearless Post. And where it came from was... Um, I, this, I got this cold email from somebody, and I don't normally get too rather, but this, this one got, got me particularly angry. So I, um, I replied to it, and I, t I gave the guy 10 tips on what he should have done because it was, well, basically, here's, here's the tip, basically. So I wrote this as a LinkedIn post, top 10 email marketing tips, headline. Okay, who'd be interested in that? Yeah, a few of you. You'd read it. Don't address the email personally to the recipient. Show people that you've used a bot to gather contacts on the web. Use the words me, I, and us as much as you can. Offer absolutely no value, and I mean no value. Uh, use really poor grammar. Remember, people will buy your shit just because you send them a totally cold email. That's a good one. Uh, don't include a link to anything, not even your website, just in case they get distracted and don't buy from you. Definitely don't include any text. Well, you get the picture anyway. So I was kind of taking the, the, the piss out of this email, but with a, hey, here's my top 10 tips. And then the idea being that I won't get people to react to each one of those. I'll take questions at the end if that's okay. So the idea being that I want people to have some kind of an emotional reaction to that, even if it's, mm, I did that in my last email marketing campaign. You know, turned out this guy was actually a, a 21 year old YouTuber who was earning 80 grand a year for YouTube. Yeah. And my gut, I listened to my gut and actually when I got his cold email, I could see the naivety in the email which he sent to me. And actually we've chatted a couple of times since. He's actually a really awesome kid driving a Range Rover that I want. Um, <laughs> Which brings me on to desire, <laughs> funny enough. So again, the desire is all about heaven if you do, hell if you don't. So if you don't buy my product, this is what's going to happen. So quick example of this. Um, basically, I um, did a talk in front of 80, 120 business students and went through three steps of market research with them. First one was, like, what's the idea? Does anybody think it's a good idea? And it's a, a product you pop in your mouth that helps you uh, connect to your smartphone and tells you how clean your teeth are when you finish brushing your teeth. Cool idea. And a few people liked that. Second one was attach a monetary value to it. And we did the Dutch auction and we ended up with about 20 people who would pay 50 pounds for this thing. But then I said, right, step number three, and this is the heaven if you do, hell if you don't. If you don't buy my product, one of your teeth is going to fall out in the next 30 days. How much will you pay for it now? Okay, we had 10 people who paid two grand for it. Yeah? Heaven if you do, hell if you don't. That's about building desire. I've got to have this product. I've got to have this Range Rover. <coughs> And then finally, we've got to um, get people to take an action. Again, you get to the bottom of the post and like, oh, great headline, we're engaged. Oh, gosh, I really want, oh, what do I do next? Well, I'll leave a comment or I'll share. And for most people, there'll be a comment or share or like, and we will do absolutely nothing with it. Okay, so you've got to give somebody a, one very specific action to do at the end of it. Could be a limited time offer or download my PDF, my lead magnet, or go and watch this video, or here's a small short form I want you to fill out and I'll give you a bit of a diagnostic. So it could be any number of different things. I'm going to come back to Ada later because there's an exercise I want to do before the break. Okay, how do I remember to do it? I use Todoist. Todoist sends me an email every single morning with a list of the stuff I've got to do. Karen is also part of the, um, the secret source behind like the systems and automization in my business. Um, and basically, then what I do is I put in things like post to LinkedIn daily. Now I've got my Ada formula. I don't need to have like um, content like programmed into Buffer that's just spouting out and like dull and boring and vanilla. All I've got to do is remember to post in LinkedIn using the Ada formula, and I can write great engaging content and do it when I'm feeling inspired and when I feel like I can inspire you guys. Okay? Don't use automation systems, please. If it's like for events, then fair enough, because there's a time limit coming up, and it's easier to, to program that stuff. But if you want to engage people properly, write content specifically for them to have a specific outcome and a purpose. Like I said, these are, the slides are all going to be online later. So how do I systemize it? I get Karen in. <laughs> um, there's um, basically, so some of you have worked with me. You fill out my type form first, and then it uses Zapier to then squirt the data into Insightly, okay, which is Insightly is a CRM. So remember, marketing is about the follow-up sequence, like the customer journey. 
It's not about chucking content out, okay? So these tools, Typeform, Zapier, and Insightly, are the first steps in my engagement process. Fill out my assessment. It creates a contact and organization and an opportunity in Insightly automatically. And it'll add you to MailChimp with a double opt-in, GDPR compliant. Mm -hmm. No, you love that. <laughs> um, so I've automated all of those processes. What it also does is it puts in six um, tasks into Insightly to remind me to follow up with those people. So I can't drop balls. And how I can give you a really great example of how this worked for me recently. Um, I had uh, three people who filled out my assessment. And so they were in as opportunities but hadn't booked their consultation. Now before, and how many of you will have dropped the ball at this point? Yeah, before I'd have dropped the ball, how many of you would have dropped that same ball? You wouldn't have, you'd have forgotten about them and maybe you'd have touched base. Oh, yeah, I meant to send you that thing. Oh, you didn't book on it. Yeah, and we'll make excuses. But I actually emailed um, the three of them at um, 10.30 in the evening. By the morning when I woke up, I had two booked on and the third one since booked on. Okay, so this, these are all ways of increasing our conversion rates. Marketing is about the whole customer journey, increasing our conversion rates, the customer journey to the sale. Yeah, not about the content we put out. So, I've got one more thing, and then I've got an exercise for you to do, and I know we're going to run over probably by five minutes, so apologies, but this is really, really important. Um, in fact, I'm going to skip straight, so I'm not going to... Who wants to know about the marketing minibus? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Kind of teased you with it. You see what I did there? <laughs> built, built a bit of desire. Well, I might, I might not... No, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you. So, um, uh, who's got products or services that are worth about 5K? Okay, so Ian, we'll stick with you. So um, how much? About 5K-ish, 10K? Yeah, 5 10 So we'll stick with 10K, okay? Now, I didn't drive here in my Passat um, that I wish was a Range Rover. I actually drove here in that really funky-looking look, minibus. I've got 10 of your perfect clients sat out in my minibus. They've all got black satchels full of cash. Now, I'm going to go and get them from my minibus, bring them in here, and they're going to empty their cash all over the floor. You've just got to give me some money. How much are you going to give me? So that's 10 clients, 10 grand each. Um, I want you all to think about this. What would your answer be? Three grand. Oh, you stingy <laughs> man! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Goodness. Twenty. I, I'm working with John. Would anybody give me more? This is going to become a twenty-five. Okay, how much? Perfect. Well, actually, my my normal figure is about fifteen percent. Ian, just so you're. Uh, just so you know. But no, um, how many of you are spending 15% of your turnover on marketing activities at the moment? Yeah, a few, a few hands shot up. So I believe that once you've, I haven't gone into the marketing mix today, but once you've found the two or three things that really work in terms of from a marketing perspective um, for you, for your business, and it'll be different for everybody. That's why I haven't done the marketing mix today, because it is different for everybody. Um, you should be turning up the volume on your spend and marketing on those two or three activities that get you the clients regularly and often. OK, most people are afraid like to spend money on marketing because we don't have the, the minibus. We don't have the guaranteed outcome at the end of it. But if we know that there's something, so it's a bit of a guessing game, but if there's something um, which we know engages our prospects and raises the chances, the odds of us getting those clients, we've just got to turn the volume up on it and be just bite the bullet, basically. Now. The reason why the next activity, by the way, questions we do is like a, um, it'll be an open Q&A with both Adam and I at, at the very end, so about quarter to 12. Um, I've got one extra activity which I want to share with you, okay? Um, I, I did this whilst I was out in Cyprus at a mastermind um, about three weeks ago, uh, and I was on a mastermind with 10 butch blokes, like all fitness professionals and me, and... Um, this activity made all of us cry like into gibbering, blubbery messes. So I'm giving you a bit of a warning, okay? If you, if you don't want to partake, that's absolutely fine. But this will change, I hope. Uh, it, it will not just create a personal um, improvement for you, but from a marketing perspective, it will also get you to rethink the content you're putting out, okay? So what I want you to do, every, whoever wants to play the game and get stuck in, I want you to spend just three or four minutes... Think of the first person that you love and write them a letter. This is the power of words, aptly named from your book, but I'm going to demonstrate it. Somebody you love, just write them a letter. Just first thing that comes to your mind. Don't even think about it. Just write it down on a bit of paper. Just scribble, scribble, start writing some sentences down. 
It could be partner, mother, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, dead relative, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just write the letter down. What I'd also encourage you to do is um, this, this letter actually is to get a really nice piece of paper at some point and actually, um, you know, if you haven't finished it now, don't, you can finish it later, but actually write it down for the person that you wrote it to and if you can, give it to them. Really important. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, there is that. So here's my letter. I was going to read it to you, but I think I might struggle. In fact, I'm going to read it to you because it's about the words. Dear Sophie, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Three weeks before you were born, I contemplated taking my life. When I looked at where I was and where I wanted to be, I felt like a complete failure. Your mother was pissed off at me. My staff were pissed off at me. I wasn't being a great daddy to Poppy. And most of all, I hated myself. So when I stood in front of the train line trying to work it all out, I thought of you. You weren't even here yet, three weeks to go, and I knew that I had one more shot to prove to you how great I really was. So here I am, Daddy. So please, I beg of you, think about the content you're writing down. No more of this bland, like, vanilla bullshit. Let's entertain some people. Let's write some really good stuff, like some decent content. Okay, your businesses are great. Like, shout about them, please. Thank you. Let's take a break. <laughs>